Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about the spline warp. The spline warp is a tool to warp or morph images. So you can either input one image and warp that image using curves, or you can input two images A and B and then through splines uh, morph from A to B. So we'll look at both, but uh, let's look at the parameters for now. So channels, output mask, this is all familiar to you. Uh, crop to format, that is making sense. B-box boundary curve is basically adding a invisible curve around the whole image. You can see here there's an orange curve around the image and that will constrain basically the warps to the border of the image. Uh, output is what you want to see in the end. So either you want to see A, you want to see B, you want to see A warped if you apply the warping to A, you want to see a B warped or A B morph. And depending on what you select, you're going to show, you're going to have different parameters. So for example, the warp here is available when you're A or A warped or B warped or B. And the mix here isn't going to appear only if you go to morph because the mix is basically a fade between image A and B. So you will really need it only when you do a morph. So when you show the output morph and then the warp goes for either the warp of A or the warp of B or the warp between A and B when you do the morph. Then we have later layer warp and pair warp. So I'll come back to that a little bit later, but uh, to give you a rough idea, when you create all these curves in your spline warp, you can arrange them by layers. You know, you can create layers in here and you can arrange your curves in layers. And if you do that, you can then uh, warp only that layer. So you can have a different value of warping per layer and then a different value of warping per pair, which is a pair curve, because you, you'll see that we have a source and destination curve the same way we have a source and destination grid in the the grid warp here is the same thing except that you use splines or curves so you can have a a curve and a b curve and then the warp will go from a to b and you can also uh, animate that so you have really three levels of warp and again we'll come back to this because this is a little complex but we have three layers of warp the root warp which is uh, this the, it's warping the whole thing every curves under this will warp the layer warp which will warp uh, any selected layer so if you select this layer and then you can move this it will only warp what's in there and then the pair warp which when you have curves you can only select that one curve and then this pair warp is only going to uh, warp these curves and so basically they are multipliers of each other right so let's say you have a warp of a 0.5 on a curve the root is multiplying the layer the layer is multiplying the curve so if you have a root at zero everything will be zero then if you have a root at one and a layer at 0.5 then everything under that layer will be at 0.5 so i know it can sound a little complicated now but we'll come back to it and i, I think it'll make sense so let's get started and create a curve let's do only one image so let's even disconnect that let's say it doesn't exist and I just want to warp this guy, right? So here you have all the tools. A bunch of these we saw in the grid warp, but basically it's pretty straightforward. This is what you see, which matches this, the output. Uh, you can output to whatever you want here. So it's changing the output here. This is all your uh, display options. And this part is basically the same options that you see here. Hide the curve and lock the curve, etc. Okay, so let's go and see uh, what we have here. So it's similar to the roto node, but there's a few more things here. So this is your uh, select tool, uh, pretty straightforward. This is when you have a curve to add remove point and uh, change the smoothness of the points and open the curves. And you know all this in the roto shape as well. Uh, this is the type of shape you want to use. So you can use any shapes that is in the roto shape. You can even copy shapes from your roto shapes into the spline warp. This is to add correspondence points. We'll see exactly what it means because they are making a difference between the points of a curve and the correspondence point of a curve. So we'll come back to this. Here, this is a pin tool, which basically is a point that you can you can select and then click around your image. And it's a point that is gonna act as a pin, which means that the area around the points is not gonna be affected by any warp. It's gonna stick, it's gonna be pinned. And this is to join curves together, like the source and the destination, right? You, you're gonna draw multiple curves and you're gonna need to tell the spline warp, oh, this is my source curve and this is my destination curve. So this is the way you do it by joining the curves together. You can also uh, unjoin them or reverse them. I mean, if you, if you wanna reverse source and destination, you can use this tool too. Okay, so let's get started and, uh, and draw some curves. Since I wanna warp only uh, that image and I don't wanna do a morph, I need to change that to A or a warped because if i don't if i'm in here it's going to create two 
curves for one and you'll see why it makes sense later but let's let's start with a simple example so creating curve bezier makes a lot of sense because of the control we have over bezier compared to the other ones so i'm just going to draw like a quick curve here like this so that's the mouth very rough and here you can see i have only one curve and it says a here which means that this curve for now it's associated with the a input and again you'll understand a little later but for now that's what it is then i'm going to draw another curve of let's say where i would want this mouth to go right so let's say i want this mouth to do some weird uh, shape like this I'm doing the same number of points as the first one, but you don't even have to do that because, like I said earlier, and that makes sense now, is that there's a difference between the points on the curve and the correspondence points. You can have like 10 points on one curve and three on one, you can still join them. And then uh, Nuke will figure out a way to join them by adding its own point on the curve. I'm doing three and three to make it simple now. So I have these two curves. And I can join them in order to create a, a warp because right now, if you look at this, nothing's happening, right? Um, so I'm going to use the join tool, which is this one. And I'm going to select the first one and then the second one. And now these two are joined together, which means that one is the source and one is the destination. And you can see that new created correspondence point, right? It thinks that, okay, this is here. And this is going there. This is going here. And this is going there, right? I don't know if you guys see well, but basically there's like dotted line that are joining the two curves together and you can with this tool change these points you can edit them and say well actually this one should be going here and this one should be going there right and you can add some by saying okay i want another one here like this okay and then i want the one there so you can make it all this whole thing a little more precise the way you want it to morph so once you have that, now you can change your, your, your warp here. Obviously, you need to look at the A warped. And this is going to start uh, warping everything. So what it's doing is it's taking that as a source, right? And that is the destination. And it's warping from first curve to second curve. And you can see it's deforming a lot of the frame because the only thing that is blocking uh, the warp here is this thing that is around the frame. So you can see basically the whole image is actually deforming. So in order to fix that, you can either draw curves around yourself that you know are not going to move, or you can use the pin tool. Then, you know, if, so let's say I'm using this pin tool here. I said, okay, I don't want anything else to move. So I'm just going to put pins around uh, this thing. Uh, and that's going to help me limit the influence of this curve. So see now, only what's within these pins is moving. You can still see a little bit of move on the, the other side. So you can, okay, say, all right, this is moving too. I'm going to put some stuff here. You know, I, I'm doing it a little randomly, but that's for, for the purpose of the example. Okay, so now you have this uh, warp on just this uh, these two things. So that's the first way of using the spline warp. I would advise that as soon as you start doing multiple curves and pins, that you start organizing yourself in here and creating layers and saying, okay, this is the mouth. So for example, here you could say, okay, I'm gonna add a new layer. I'm gonna name it mouth. And I'm going to put these two curves in there. It will make sense later on because very quickly you can have very complex splines and group of splines in there and your mouth really could end up being you know i don't know five curves or ten curves because you want it to be including uh, the hair here or you want it to have the lips separately and you know you want to do something a little more complex and another advantage of doing layers is that you can have only this layer warp let's say i'm doing another uh, warp for the eyes and let's try that right away actually i'm going to do something very quickly quick here uh, so let's say I'm doing this I and then I'm going to uh, create a destination for this one uh, what I could do is I could duplicate and join right so instead of creating another curve for the destination and then joining them I can actually create a curve from that one right so let's say I'm going to right click and do duplicate and join. So it's creating a second curve here and I can move this curve, which is the destination curve, right? And this way I'm sure that they're similar and they make sense together. Not that this is mandatory to do it this way, but that's uh, one way of doing it. And again, it's right click, duplicate and join. So now I have another curve here 
And again, if you don't know, you can select them from here. You can also name them, you know, to be more precise. Uh, I would advise you do that too. But here I'm not going to do it because I want to go faster and I'm a little bit lazy. Here we go. So now we have these things. Okay, so this is one eye and this is the other eye. So let's say I'm going to do a group for a layer for all the eyes. All right, so it's like eyes, both eyes. And I, this is going in there. So what, now what I have is that I have this uh, warp here, layer warp that is at one for this layer, right? For my eyes and for my mouth. And they're both at one uh, by default. So which means that if I push this, and let me, okay, so if I push this parameter here, both the eyes and the mouth are gonna morph uh, according to this value, right? But if I, let's say I go to the maximum, I go to one, and now I want these eyes to actually uh, morph slowly or to morph after the mouth. So I can just have the layer of the eyes morph at a different speed. So you could animate all this and have different dynamic basically for each part of the of the face that you want to animate. So that could, you know, be helping you doing some more cartoony effects or have like one eye grow before the other, for example, if you were to separate this eye, these eyes uh, separately. And uh, but think about it in a way that these are all multipliers, right? So if my eye is at 0.5 here and this is at 0.5, that means that actually this is the eye now is at like a quarter of what it would be uh, if everything was at the maximum, right? So this multiplied this and this group multiplies whatever's inside. And you can go pretty deep in terms of like how many layers within each other you can have, right? That's basically how it works for uh, warping. There you go. So let's look at morphing now. So let's delete all this and we come back to a normal face. And uh, now I'm going to link the second input to here. The idea when you do a morph is that you want some curves associated with the image A and some curves associated with the image B. So for example, you would draw a curve on A that is associated with A and that is the shape of this mouth. And then you would draw another curve on B that is associated with this mouth. So it means that you have a, like a mouth for A and mouth for B. And then from there, you can morph from A to B. So multiple way of doing that. So we could do it the same way we did for the simple A. So the first way would be I'm creating, uh, I'm creating a curve that is for the uh, mouth A. Then I'm, I'm just looking at A and I'm, I'm looking at B now and I'm creating another curve for the mouth B, All right? And see it's blue right away because I'm on B now. And when, when you do that, this curve here is labeled A and this curve there is labeled B. So that means that the curve on A is labeled A and the curve on B here is labeled B, right? Because when I drew the curve, I was in this mode output, right? If by mistake, let's say, let's, I'm gonna delete this one. And let's say that you were mistaken and then you were looking here instead of looking in your spam warp and then you drew a curve. Let's say I'm drawing another curve now and I'm drawing my uh, B mouth. I'm like, oh, no, I drew it in A actually. So now it's in A. Well, you can always move it to B. You can do that and now it's in B. So if you're gonna check that in B, your curve is gonna be there. Right, it goes into A or into B. So that's one way of doing it. The second way of doing it, it's faster, is to actually go into AB morph, right? So it's showing you A, then you're drawing one curve again. But then when you finish drawing it, it actually copy the curve and then put this curve in uh, B. So what it means is now you can select that curve, go to B, and then move it, right? That's a different way of doing it. So there you go. Now we have two curves, A and B, right? That are in A and in B. And if you go to AB morph, you can see uh, the A to B. And since it's at one, of course, it's going to move uh, the mouth from A to B, right? We don't want that for now. The third way of doing it is, uh, and you'll see it makes a lot of sense too, is I'm looking at A only, let's say. I'm drawing this mouth again. And then now I'm right-clicking and I can say duplicate in B and join. 
right? So that will make another curve in B. So now we have a second curve in B and they're already joined. So there's multiple way of doing things. There's no right way. It's a workflow thing. People prefer one way or another. It doesn't really matter as long as you understand the concept of uh, what is in A, what is in B, right? When it's in both A and B, obviously, is because you want to use it for, to, to morph from one to the other. So going back to this, now you can see that uh, this is warping from uh, A to B. And if you do that at the same time that you move the mix, so like this, it's morphing the mouth from one to the other. And then we can do the same thing we did for the grid warp, which means that we can like either link like this, uh, one to the other, and then that means that we're gonna be able to move both. So if you look at the, mo the mouth now, it's uh, moving and morphing. Let me hide it. The mouth is moving pretty good. Uh, the rest, of obviously, we don't have any curve, so it, it, is, it is still messy. But that's uh, the idea overall. And I think that's pretty much all you need to know to understand the whole spline warp. So to show you what it looks like, I just earlier, I just did another version of that spline warp quickly, where I drew uh, a bunch of curves everywhere. And also I put them in groups and subgroups, I mean layers and sublayers rather, uh, to make everything clear when I use it, you know, so for example, and there's a mouth uh, layer that contains the wrinkle of the mouth, which is this thing in the corner. It contains uh, the lips, the little hair here, the mustache, the ears as the left and right ear. So it's all separate, right? But when I mix the whole, uh, I'm going to link it again. When I mix the whole thing like this, so it takes a little time to refresh. And now every single part have a curve basically and the, the morph will look much uh, smoother this way right between the two so that's really is the way you do you do more so here it is that's the the way it works if you guys have uh, any questions uh, about the the spline warp i know this one is a little complex uh, leave a comment or like the video and uh, i'll see you next time